Hello and welcome to a not so awesome review. And it has been a while since I've made a uh, comic book review. I think I can't remember. I think I did Superman. Superman might have been the last one I did. Anyways, gonna be trying to get back into doing these on a more regular basis. Did an update video on that. If you watched it, cool. If you didn't, because I know a lot of people didn't. I'm just saying. Yeah, I'm gonna try and be doing reviews at least once a week for comic books, but we'll, we'll see how that goes because. It's a lot of reading, and I, I have other things I need to do. But anyways, today we are taking a look at Batman Rebirth Deluxe Edition of Volume 1, which is basically the first two trade paperbacks combined into one deluxe hardcover. I did do a review for the Volume 1. I think it was called I Am Gotham, and I think Volume 2... Is it I Am Suicide. I didn't get Volume 2. I actually, I only bought the Volume 1 because I really wanted to read uh, the story and I was trying to not buy any of the individual issues of Batman. You know, just, I don't want to spend too much money. But I did end up getting the trade paperback for the first one and then I got this here. And um, yeah, so I'm not going to get into too much on the whole first half of the book. If you guys want to check out a review for the paperback, which is the same exact story, I will leave a link in the description down below. A few things I will say though, I did reread the whole thing and, you know, the first half of the book is still really good. I want to just like knock this out first. Um, it is really good, but it still could have been much longer. I mentioned that in the review for the uh, I Am Gotham trade and yeah, it... it if they stretched it out and made that whole story arc, the uh, whole 15 issues we get here, it would have been amazing. But yeah, let's start off with that. Uh, we do have a nice big hardcover. And I did bring out the Court of Owls Volume 1 so you guys can see that this uh, hardcover here is taller than the New 52 books. So they will be a little bit higher on your shelf. Not really a problem. It would be nice consistency-wise to have them all the same height. Um, another thing is these ones, typically seven issues. This one had issue one through seven. This, like I said, uh, issues one through five, plus the rebirth issue and the backup story rooftops, which I think is like two parts. So in total, we're about like 17-ish issues long, uh, if you want to count the backup story as like one giant one. And another thing, which I think is hilariously awesome, I wasn't sure if they were just doing this for the... I don't know, deluxe hardcovers, the smaller hardcovers, but uh, after getting most of them uh, that have been coming out, I've noticed that DC has kind of listened, and we get a cool picture under here, which it looks awesome. I mean, the art on it is cool and stuff. My only complaint, <laughs> and yeah, you know, I'm still going to complain about it. If you guys watch my older reviews, you'll know that my biggest complaint was the fact that these ones all look like this. I mean, you can see it's like embossed. It says Batman, Court of Vows, and it does say stuff here on the side, but you can't really read it. It's it's all just not great. I wish they had put the name on the side of the book, because it, it, still, it still leaves you with the same problem I was having before, where, um, yeah, if you lose the dust jacket, it'll have a cool picture, but on the shelf, you're not going to know what it is unless you can tell by the side art, which, I mean, the Batman's not even on the side art. It's just some soldiers and it's dark. I mean, you can maybe guess it, but if you've never seen this before or if you're not used to it, uh, you might have some issues figuring out what this is or which volume, at the very least, it is. Another thing I do want to note is that the older ones cost it retail $24.99. These ones retail for $34.99, $10 more. Uh, that is United States dollars, by the way. It's uh, $45.99 Canadian. This one was bound and printed in Canada. And the only reason I'm mentioning that is because one of my other books that I got um, was printed in, I think, Mexico. And again, it didn't really say. It just said it in the back right there. And then there was one that was printed in the U.S. And it was plastered all over the freaking saran wrap, which I thought was hilarious. Because they're like, oh my god, it's printed in the U.S. Let's make a big deal make sure everybody knows. So getting back to the story here, it is the first two trade paperbacks in hardcover form, which is awesome, though uh, if you've already got the paperbacks, obviously there's no reason for you to pick this up. It's it's really no different from what I can tell. I know the trade paperback has sketch art in the back. I, if I'm remembering correctly, this has the same exact sketch art in the back. Uh, 
more or less. So you're not really getting anything extra from what I can tell. If I'm wrong, you know, go ahead and leave it in the comments. But, you know, you will get, you know, a bigger, like the images will look a little bit bigger and stuff. If that's something you're into, the text might be just a little bit bigger. So that might help out some people who have problem reading smaller writing, though it's not going to be a drastic difference. I do want to mention that off right off the bat. Like I said, story-wise, the first half, uh, the whole I Am Gotham story arc with Gotham and Gotham Girl is really well done. I just want to insert this clip here really quick because uh, the next part of this video I'm going to be talking about how good the Rebirth issue was. Talking about issue one, I kind of got that one mixed up with the Rebirth issue. Again, this is actually the second time it's happened because the Rebirth issue is actually really boring. Has Duke in it who isn't really in the series as much uh, as he is in some of the other series. And it involved Calendar Man. It, it wasn't wasn't good. So when I say the Rebirth issue was really good in the next part of this video, uh, I'm talking about issue one. Issue one was really good. I will say that the Rebirth issue, which is my third time talking about it, because I did do a review of the single issue, is still one of the I wouldn't say best, but it's one. It's, it's a really good story because we see Batman going up against an enemy that he can't really punch his way out of. It's it's just it's not even I, I wouldn't call it a natural disaster because it is technically like a terrorist attack, but it's still cool to see him try and save the day against something that you know if it happened in real life I don't think there's anything anyone can do. So it it, it was really it was good. I, I don't want to talk too much spoilers right now. We'll get into that in a few minutes though once I get through the basic story of this. Uh, we get introduced to Gotham and Gotham Girl, who are both Superman-esque type uh, superheroes. We find out how their powers work, we find out their origin, which is really interesting. And it does involve Batman, and Gotham is kind of like a fan of his, and he kind of got inspired by him to become uh, Gotham. And then stuff happens, and... Well... This, this is where... I think the the story itself kind of falls apart a little bit because we see kind of like a downfall in uh, Gotham. Though it's not his own fault, uh, I believe the villain, well, you know, I'm not going to mention it yet, but he, he does have some issues that involve somebody kind of manipulating him and uh, turns into this like big battle, which was really good. But if they had stretched it out, like I mentioned, if they stretched it out just six more issues, made it a whole year. I think the effect of what happened would have been so much better. Not going to say much about that because like I said I'll save that for the spoiler section of it, but it is still a really good story. We do get two issues that involve the Night of the Monster Men and it tells you to read the Night of the Monster Men I think so you can uh, get the whole story. We just get the two issues that are in the Batman thing. So I don't know how I feel about that. Like in a collecting standpoint I do like that we're getting every single issue in this trade. Uh, you know, we've gotten trades in the past before where, you know, you have to buy the actual, uh, what is it, like the, the compilation story, the actual main story, and then they'll just not have those issues in here. So it'll skip from, let's say, I, I'm not really, I don't remember what issue it is, but let's say it skips issues 7 and 8, so you'll go from 6 to 9 and not have the in between there though it kind of sucks because we get those two issues i believe it's two issues it could be three i'm pretty sure it was two of them uh we get those two issues in there we get the first part of it and i believe like the third or fourth part of it but we don't get the ending and obviously by the time you get to the next part it's kind of really out of context so glad that it's there uh, in a collecting way kind of sucks that you know, you don't get the whole story. Uh, you have to read, I think it was DC Comics and DC Comics, Detective Comics and um, Nightwing to get the full story. I don't remember if there was an actual Night of the Monster Men single series thing. I do have it. I did read it. I was going to review it and I will do it in time. But long story short, it sucked. Uh, it, it, I mean, if you liked it, good for you. I there's actually more than just the fact that the story wasn't good. I think just the book wasn't produced great and the writing was not clear. Uh, there's a lot of things wrong with that book, which sucks because, like I said, I, I feel like 
they rushed the whole first arc of this. And not just that, I did read the first uh, trade for, what was it, uh, Detective Comics, I forgot the name of it, but um, yeah, it feels like those two first arc stories were rushed to get to Night of the Monster Men, which was, to me, a letdown. It wasn't good, uh, but again, that's for another video. Getting to the second half of the book, we have the story arc I Am Suicide, which is interesting. Batman basically, I wouldn't say teams up with Amanda Waller, but he uh, he, he goes to her. Uh, it is fun seeing him get to her because we get like this kind of scene where the security guards are like, well, we're over here. You know, there's all these guards. There's no way he's going to make it down here to you. And obviously it's Batman. He can make it anywhere he wants and he gets to her. And it's, it's, it's just, it's a good scene. It's funny. And he gets her help. But it's kind of like, you're helping me, I'm helping you kind of situation. He forms his own kind of suicide squad, which is why it's I Am Suicide. Recruits some of his supervillains, including Catwoman. I don't actually remember the names of the other ones. They weren't really big. I believe one of them was the Mad Hatter, if I'm correct. He's one of them. But aside from that, I don't remember who the other ones are. And I could be wrong. I mean, he wasn't the Mad Hatter. I just, I don't remember. I read this like a month ago. So I'm trying my best to do this by memory. But yeah, no, it was a good story to go after uh, Bane in his home country where he is keeping a supervillain kind of that Batman needs so he can help Gotham Girl. And the whole story of it's good. It's kind of, it, it's kind of like a heist thing going on. You know, they're breaking in and essentially stealing bad guy from Bane which is cool I mean we get to see Bane kind of utilizing the the reason why he has this villain with him and stuff like I said by the time you get to the actual story there it you know you'll, you'll know who the bad guy is I'm just keeping it spoiler free I mentioned that way too much sometimes don't I but yeah no it is a really good story I think it's done well I I want to say I like it a little bit more than maybe the whole Gotham storyline and that's just because although it is short it doesn't feel as rushed as uh, the first one did so it's definitely worth a read if you maybe just picked up the trade and you're thinking should I get volume two of it then yeah definitely get it if you haven't picked up any of them get the hardcover yeah there, there's really not much else to talk about in the story wise aspect of this we do find out stuff about Catwoman that I think was really good her story in this because she has her own story going on throughout that whole uh i am suicide storyline and it is actually really interesting it's really good not much to really say about it without spoiling things but it, it was really good and i i really did like that one the art in it i think is hands down it, it, it is perfect it is it is amazing i mean there are some parts where we get kind of like a wide angle and it just it doesn't look good it looks you know not as detailed but when it comes to actual uh good shots of everybody like batman catwoman i think the art looks amazing it is really good i really liked it i know i mentioned before and i got a l not hate but people disagreeing on me on saying that greg capullo's like i like his art i really do but his faces to me are very similar to each other uh especially in the eyes they always have this weird like they do express emotion but sometimes it feels like they're not expressing emotion i don't know it's hard to explain maybe i'll do a video on that later but the art in here i think looked really well all the way through uh if it was done by greg Capullo, i wouldn't care just want to put that out there i i like his art before anybody starts commenting like oh how dare you say all these blah blah blah, blah. I know, uh, he's a good artist. I just really, really liked how this came out, especially towards the end. The Rooftops uh, backup story, let's get into that really quick, is really good. Uh, if anybody knows what's going on with Batman and Catwoman, this is kind of a lead up to that. I believe it's the next issue, actually, that got a lot of attention because of what happens. And the Rooftops kind of story was really good. And, I mean... Part of me wants to say, like, that that could have been a thing all on its own. So, yeah, I, I don't know. It was just really good. They kind of go back and forth between, like, this is the first time we met. And it goes to kind of, like, the current continuity-ish. I want to say ish because it's in pre-New 52, they met. And she lived in, like, a bad neighborhood. There was prostitute people around. It, it was 
way different than how they met in the original uh, Golden Age, which they referenced a few times here too, which is what I really liked. One of them was saying, I met you, you were doing this, and then she was like, no, it was like this. So we're getting an explanation of how they met in both uh, the Golden Age and pre-New 52, which I think was awesome, and um, yeah, I think I'm out of things to say there. Book-wise, I'd give it a 4 out of 5, because one, like I said, has those two issues, which is good, but annoying. I, I can see it annoying people, but it's good because for people who want every issue, it, at least it's there, they're not skipping anything. And two, because once again, that first story arc uh, was rushed, and it could have been better. Otherwise, it is a really good read, and I do recommend it. Getting on spoilers really quick, a few things I want to address. Just the whole Gotham storyline still annoys me, because it was really good. We learn, you know, his origin. Like, I think, what, one issue in, we learn his origin. Batman kind of pays uh, their parents a visit as Matches Malone, which I think is awesome, because I don't think he's done that in a while. And, you know, they he, he learns their backstory of like oh batman saved him when he was a kid which kind of makes you think like how long has batman been batman now because he, he was a kid and now he's a full-grown adult and i believe i don't know the whole st uh, the i remember there was like an official statement a few years ago that made no sense continuity wise just because he went through three robins in a very short amount of time so maybe they expanded the time he's been batman I don't know. But yeah, the whole learning his backstory I think was really well. Getting to know the character was done poorly. This is my biggest complaint. We get to see Gotham go up against Solomon Grundy and that that was pretty much it. After that they do go, I think uh, there was like a bridge accident or something if I'm remembering correctly and they're there uh, holding it up and it's fine and all but I think it would have been so much better if we had like maybe at at least one to two story arcs where him and Batman teamed up taking down other supervillains and then had Psycho Pirate come and kind of make him go crazy because you know we, we didn't have enough time to kind of get attached to the character and so when he becomes kind of I wouldn't say a bad guy because at the same time like I said the Psycho Pirate's the one who kind of manipulates him into doing the things he does. Uh, it would make kind of that more tragic. It would make it more like I don't, I don't really want to take you out because you're a really good guy. And I mean, Batman gets that he like doesn't want to. Uh, he ends up calling the Justice League, which is an epic battle. But again, it lasted so little, and Superman really did not do a good job against them, which is a little surprising. That could have been a whole issue of itself. That could have been. Like, instead of doing Monster Man, Batman bringing in uh, his whole uh, Batman, I guess, team, you know, uh, Robin, if they, you know, did stuff differently, Robin, Batwoman, uh, Spoiler, and Orphan, I'm trying to remember what she calls herself now. If he brought all of them in, and Duke, and, like, that would have been a really cool way to end that story arc, to have him have all of his Bat family there, have the Justice League there throw in Red Hood because, well, Red Hood. I think that would have been better. Like I said, made it two arcs longer, given Gotham a better story arc so we could have become more attached to him and made us feel more kind of like upset of what happened to him. Because although it did suck, it was over and done with in one volume and over and done with in half of the volume over here. So that is my biggest complaint on that. Monster Men, I'm... I don't even want to talk about it, but I will talk about it eventually. But it, it isn't like it, it's not even just the fact that I feel like the Gotham story was so short because of Night of the Monster Men, but also because it just it the art in it wasn't that great. I can get over that. You know, everybody has different art style taste. Uh, maybe I don't like the art style. You do. Somebody else does. Somebody out there is going to like it no matter what. So when it comes to art, I kind of try not to review it too harshly because it's all opinion based. Um, but like what what I can't get over is the fact that they just the, just the writing in it wasn't that good. It wasn't that clear. It wasn't you couldn't tell who was talking to who sometimes because you know most of the time they add the bat symbol here or the uh, red hood symbol 
here's the Nightwing symbol. So we all know who's talking to who. And in that one, they didn't really do it. And it was just really annoying. And I'm just going on a rant there. But I think they fixed it a little bit in this one. I have to go back to the uh, Nine of Monster Men and check it. But I'm pretty sure they fixed it. So maybe it was already always there on just the Batman ones. And they were smart enough to do it. But I, I'm not sure. I know they didn't do it in that book. I went over it a few times to make sure. And, um... That's all I'm going to say about Night of the Monster Men for now. Okay, so lastly here talking about the I Am Suicide arc. It wasn't bad, but I, at the same time, I feel like it was done mostly because of the Suicide movie, I think, was coming out at the same time. And the Justice League versus Suicide Squad, I think, happened, like, right after that. So I, it's just, it's kind of like, you know, I, I know what you guys were doing. You were You were trying to advertise that movie, weren't you? Yeah, that's... That's what was going on there. But other than that, it wasn't a bad story. I did like seeing Batman kind of team up with his villains. It wasn't like villains that were well known. It's not like he teamed up with like Penguin, uh, Joker, or Two Face, or any of the big guys. Uh, if you want to consider uh, Mad Hatter one of the big guys, I, I don't know. Is he in it? I'm pretty sure it was him. It was the Ventriloquist. Yep. Yep, definitely not Mad Hatter. It was the Ventriloquist. I guess you can kind of consider him one of the bigger ones, though he hasn't been utilized as much, uh, I think, lately. The other guys, I don't even remember their names, so that's how big they are. And Catwoman, who I never really consider a villain that much, more maybe an anti-hero, something, because she does have morals, she's not crazy, though in this they lead you on to think she killed a bunch of people. And then you find out why she would have killed these people. And you're like, well, that's kind of justified. Then you find out it's not her. And it was her roommate. And it's like, oh my god, her roommate from the, uh, like, back in the day, pre-New 52. She's the one who kind of snapped and did all this stuff. That was cool. I like the throwback to her. I like how everything was handled there. I think it was done really, really good. Really not much else to say about that spoiler-wise. Bane was naked half the time. So that was the thing that happened. I, I believe he was naked. It looked like... I mean, he didn't show anything, but yeah, he looked, like, I didn't even recognize him when they showed him, so, the, he reminded me of one of the Street Fighter characters, the, the bald guy, probably because we are both bald, and, well, I mean, he's wearing shorts, but, you know, couldn't really tell if Bane was wearing anything, which is disturbing. But anyways, that is my review for Batman Deluxe, Rebirth Deluxe Edition Volume 1. Are they going to name it something else later, or is it just going to be called Rebirth Deluxe Edition Volume 2? Because that's a little bit lazy. I'm kind of tired of seeing this blue banner. And I have a feeling it's going to be like the Marvel Now banner. Where it's not going to go away anytime soon. But like I said, that's my review. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you for watching. And I will see you guys later. Goodbye.